in truth seasons. You know, you can't know the times if you're not in the spirit. And you can't know the seasons if you're not in truth. That's why it says, Jesus said, my father is seeking. The father is not asking. He's seeking. For who? Worshippers. But the way he is glorified, see? Because you can worship him and not glorify him. It's a difference. Worshipping him is for who he is. But glorifying him means not my will, but your will be done. That in this suffering, your glory will be on, will manifest. Jesus said, Father, glorify me that I may glorify you. The moment the Holy Spirit led him to the Garden of Gethsemane. To drink a cup, carry a cross, and put on a crown. See the difference? C, C, C. The cup, the cross, and the cup is where, watch this, covenants, inheritances, and destiny is established. Don't miss this. No crown, no throne. The road map, sons and daughters, to destiny is the cross. The road map to purpose is the cup. The road map, can I give you the GPS? Can I show you the way to your destiny, to your purpose and identity? Let us look at the firstborn. Before we get to the letters, this is the way the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus by revealing who he is in times and seasons. You know, every time and season, Jesus wants to reveal himself to you in a new way. Watch this. And it takes faith to hear. And it takes love to see. And then it takes hope to understand. Can I say that again? That's why he says three things, only three things will remain on this earth. Isn't that amazing? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 that only three things will remain on this earth. Faith, hope, and love. These three must always operate in your life in every time and season. Especially faith. Love is the greatest, but I tell you the truth. Faith can't work. Without love. But love cannot hear without faith. You need these three. Write it down because lately I've been seeing these three angels. And their names are faith, hope, and love. You meet them on the mountain when you overcome the valley. Let me say that again. In order for you to make it to the mountain, which is your destiny and purpose on the line, you're going to go through the valley. The shadow of death. Can you see the roadmap? Who needs GPS tonight? Direction. Who needs wisdom tonight? You need GPS. Jesus says, I am the way. So he will point the way. Your destiny is on the mountain. There's two mountains you will always be on. The Mount of Gethsemane is the place of suffering. You want to write that down because let me tell you the truth. In every time and season, you're either going to be in the mountain or the garden. Always. Because it goes to what I'm going to share with you from the beginning. You're either going to be in the garden. That's the morning time. Or the garden. The garden or the mountain. The mountain is the heights. The garden is the depths.
today Jesus said, the father sees in secret. Mm, please don't miss this. Because Jesus has to tell each and every one of you, the father is waiting for you in the secret place. He has some treasures for you. Tell my sons and daughters, the father sees in secret. Tell them he's waiting for them in the secret place. Now, just imagine your big brother, Jesus, comes and tells you that the father is waiting in the secret place for you. Won't you have like an anticipation? Like, okay, what does the father have? See, you have to know, watch this also, different times and seasons, places he will call you. What did he tell Moses? There is a place by me. Therefore, in every time and season, there is a place by the father he will call you. From glory to glory. Let me say it again, what Jesus said. How many of you know he reveals the father? And the father reveals him. So when Jesus reveals the father, he also reveals his heart. He also reveals his times. He also reveals his seasons. He also reveals his business. Mm -hmm. His heart is what he's saying. His times is what he's doing. Don't miss this. His season is what he's manifesting. So we're going to go there. Don't miss this. You have to know his heart. What is the father saying? That's faith. Because faith come by hearing. If the father is speaking, your faith. Ah, see? Faith come by hearing. Let him that have an ear hear what the... See, can you see the spirit of God and the father are one? So the, the, the spirit and the father is one. Those who are led by the Spirit are the, see, sons of God. When you are led by the Spirit, as a son, you will hear the Father first before you see. Jesus said, my Father has not left me because I do those things that pleases him. Maybe not tonight because I have a list of things that pleases the Father. Faith is the highest. I'm going to share with you, if you don't mind, uh, the, in, the royal hearts of the kingdom, meaning the integral hearts of the kingdom. Which one is the highest and which one is the lowest? Faith is up there because it's one of the weighty matters of his heart. Everybody, you see that? He has weighty matters. He has depth matters. He has length matters. You see how in Ephesians uh, 3 verse 17, Jesus said the height, the depth, the width, the length. All those are matters of the heart. So one season, he wants to reveal the heights of his heart. This season, he wants to reveal the depths of his heart. This walk is not boring. Anybody tell you walking with Jesus and the Father is boring? It's in religion. Because I'm telling you, there are new every morning. Every morning, Jesus and the Father reveal themselves to you in a new way. You've not seen, you've not heard, or you've not yet understood. That's what you call trust. Eyes have not seen love. Ears have not heard hope. Sorry. Ears have not heard faith. For your eyes to see, you need love. So if your love goes down, you're going blind. Uh-oh, don't miss this. If your hearing is going down, you're going deaf. See, that's why it says, thou deaf and dumb spirit. Oh, it's coming for your tongue and your ears. Eyes have not seen. You need love to see. Write it down. It will help you. If your love walk is going down, you're not seeing what he's doing. If your faith walk is going down, you're not hearing what he's saying. And it really, it takes faith to get direction and instructions. Go left. Go right. You don't see it. He directs you with his voice. So the ear of God is for humility. And it's for the voice of God. Go right. Go here. You won't see it. It's faith. Eyes have not seen love. Ears have not heard faith. Neither has it enter into the heart. Hope. Christ in me. Hope in me. Heart. You see those three? Every time it's time for war and battle, I see those three angels. Faith, hope, and love. But today I saw a very unique angel I've not I've never seen before. 
Have you ever seen an angel that's wrapped in the seven spirits of God? I want to share with you also how the seven spirits of God are for war and battle. Don't miss that. Because don't let no one tell you, oh, right now we're in a time of peace and prosperity. Wrong. It's war and battle, whether you see it or not. And it's sad if you don't. That means you're not on your watch. Because a watchman, like an eagle, sees ahead what's coming. And they warn the rest. Hey, Satan is coming. Watch and pray. Then now you need what? The seven spirits of God to tell you what to do. See? Especially the spirit of wisdom and counsel. In this season, you need wisdom and counsel. The Father sees in secret. This is what Jesus said. And he rewards in the open. Two names. You ready? Jehovah El Rohi. Jehovah El Elyon. The Father who sees. Everybody see that? You have to know his name before you can go to the secret place. Ah, don't miss that. Don't miss that. You have to know his name to get access to places. Oh, I want to help somebody. Come on. Do you know why you don't have access to certain places? You don't know his name in that place. Well, I'm going to help you today. You need to know his name to have access to the chambers of his heart where he's calling you. I'm going to slow down. It's a long letter today. Please, I need your patience. But two, three letters I want to read to you from 5 a.m. this morning till 9 in the morning. So from 5 to 9, the Father and Jesus is speaking. They, I'm telling you, they love morning times. If you will get up in the morning and don't be lazy, you will have a whole book. They will be speaking to you from 2025 to 2032. You be prepared. Moses, you want to see my glory? Okay. Come up. Get up in the morning. There go instruction. He didn't see the glory. He first heard the voice. See, faith is what got Moses up in the morning. He, he heard, get up in the morning. Hmm. Oh, I, want, I want to see your glory then. What time should I get up? You cannot see his glory if you don't get up in the morning. Read Ex Exodus 16 and Exodus 33 and 34. How many of you want to see your, his glory in your life? Morning time. And glory is the time we are in. Right, everybody? Kingdom, power, glory. When Jesus came the first time, he came with kingdom. When he left, he left the power. He's coming back. And he's coming back in glory. Read Luke 9, 22. And read Matthew 25, 31 to 46. It's where the, it says when he comes back in glory, mm -hmm. he's going to separate the nations, the sheep from the goat. When the glory comes, it separates the sheep from the goat. It gathers first. Face to face gathers. Heart to heart separates. Can I say it again? You may say, my friend, what realm are we in in these last days? The kingdom is not enough. Although it says in Matthew 25, the, the last chapter says, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached, then the end will come. So the message of the last days is the kingdom of God. But the manifestation of the end times is the glory of God. And if you're not in the glory, hmm, which is face to face, But you see that? And I, let me say it again. We will keep saying it. Moses. Lord, you have told me that these people, but you have not shown me who will go with me. He said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Bam. The presence of God is not the glory of God. 
in his presence you get rest, but you don't see. He said, I don't just want your presence. I want more. Show me your glory. There's a difference between glory and presence. Don't miss this. In the glory, you get fullness of fullness. But in his presence, you just get fullness in one area. In his presence is fullness of joy. See? But you need rest. You need peace. Where you get that? Where you get that? Where you get the peace and joy? Different places. Presence. Heart. Face. Feet. And fullness. But let me say this again. Each and every one of you, don't miss it. It's going to take sacrifice. The Father sees in secret. Don't miss this. Jesus loves the third watch. The Father is over the fourth watch. Third watch, which is from 12 to 3, is for brides. Fourth watch is for sons. So if you're gonna if you're gonna walk and work with the father, you're gonna have to get up in the morning. If you have excuses, you remain a child. But if you're going to be a bride, okay, I don't mind sharing this with you because you are family. One of the one of one of the spiritual daughters in Jamaica, Jesus appeared to her and said, Tell my son he needs to be in Jamaica for seven days. So I asked Jesus for confirmation. Don't miss this. He said, when you get to Jamaica, you must pray from 12 to 6 every day. Now, why 12 to 6? 12, midnight till 6. I'm going to help each and every one of you. That's when you watch this. He said to me, on earth as a man, I spent all night with my father from 6 to 6, taking dominion over the night and the darkness. And during the day, I walked in the light. So you have to have dominion. To have dominion over darkness and gross darkness, you have to do six to six. You can't say, let there be light, if you don't have dominion over the nighttime. He said, I've made a covenant with you, like David, the covenant of the day and the night. And it can't be broken. Because you can't stop the day from rising. You can't stop the night from coming. See, certain covenants, nothing can stop it. It's in creation. See that instruction, everyone on the line? I didn't see him. I heard. Faith gives you instruction. And then when you obey, you see. Obedience is what opens your eyes, not faith. So is your ears obedient? Not just your heart. Your ears have to obey the voice. Your heart has to understand his voice. Then you move. Why is he saying 12 to 6 in this time and season? Six hours. How many days was the man created on? The sixth day. So watch this. I want to help all of you. In order to fully mm -hmm, release the love, the power, and the glory of God in people's life, you have to pray for six hours. Because the number of men is six. That's why Jesus spent all night with his father from six to six. And I asked him, show me, what did you do when you rose early in the morning to be with the father? He was praying in tongues. Because he was full of the Holy Spirit. So he was full of tongues. Then watch this. So I saw Jesus on the mountain praying on his knees in Hebrew. And then at 3 a.m., the father will appear physically in front of him. So he prayed from 6 to 3. <laughs> we got to get there, my friends. From 6, 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. How many hours is that? That's nine hours. No wonder he was able to birth things. After nine hours of prayer, at 3 a.m. exactly, I saw the Father appear before Jesus, physically. Okay, today, go to the pool of Bethesda. Then the Father started giving Jesus instructions what to do for the day. But he spent nine hours in prayer. This is how sons of men must operate. Now, it's not going to be like that every day. 
but there are certain seasons you have to get up. I said, Jesus, that's what you did? Wow. From six to six, he said, the Holy Spirit helped me in my weakness. Pray in tongues. Remember, tongues build you up. I said, wow. So the Holy Spirit spoke tongues through me to build me up in anticipation of meeting the Father at 3 a.m. See, tongues, watch this, is what builds you up to stand before the Father. Not prophecy. Prophecy builds the church. Tongues build you. So you have to be built to stand in the weight of the Father's glory. That's why when the Father came down, the three fell asleep. <laughs> yes. They, Peter, John, and James were knocked out. The glory was so heavy. But why could Jesus stand? Uh -huh. So how many of us want dominion over the day and the night? Over the sun and the moon? Mm -hmm. It's a price. That one, one minute, two minutes prayer, my friends will not work. Oh. Okay, let me give you an example. He said, tongues is like refilling a car because the gas is on E. Now, everybody, how do you fill up your tank? You have to know the price of what? The gas. Don't miss this. If you don't know the gas prices, how much will you, you don't know how much to pay to fill up your car tank, right? Okay, so it is in the spirit. If you don't know the price, you will always be on E. You have to, every day, you have to go to the gas station, which is the father, pay the price, mm -hmm, wait, and put gas in your car. Many don't want to wait on him. That's why they are on, on E. But when you go to the gas station, you put your car, your car waits while you're filling it. How many minutes? It has to wait maybe two, three minutes till the car is full. Then now you can start the car. Don't start your day if you're not full. You're going to get in an accident. Hmm. It's time for you and I, as I'm talking to you, I see a gas station. That's amazing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I see a red car. It's a sports car. Holy Spirit said, car represents destination. To reach your destination, mm -hmm, you need GPS. And you need to fill up your car from E to F. But you must pay the price to get to your destiny. And just as in the natural, gas prices are going high. Oh, my friends, so, this, so things in the spirit and in heaven, prices are going high. Oh, the same price Jesus paid it's different from the price we are paying. They say, you're going to do greater works. I mean, we're going to pay greater prices. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. This is why many are lacking. They didn't pay the price. It is up to each and every one of you. And I'm going to help you because I know the prices. Some are emerald. Some are sapphire, some are gold, some are platinum, some are diamonds. There are different prices for different destinies. Mm -hmm. But I know one thing, don't miss this. To contend and wrestle with the Father in this time and season, you have to be like Jacob and get up in the morning. And your flesh is going to fight you the most from not getting up. We are in the seventh month. Before I get to the letter, I have to encourage you. Jesus said today, don't miss this. He said, visit, I love it. This is for all of you. He said, visitations accompany prophets. Manifestation accompany, that means it follows you wherever you go. So as a prophet, when a prophet show up, you're going to get a visitation. Mm -hmm. 
He said, when you're a bride, man, no, sorry. He said, when you're a son, manifestations follow you. That means wherever you go, manifestations follow you. Watch this. He said, as a friend, demonstrations follow you. Whereas as a bride, operations follow you. So who need a visitation? Then you have to be around a prophet. You see? It says, uh, in, watch this. It says in Job, who is man that you visit every morning? Ah, I don't miss that. It's in Job chapter 7. You visit man every morning. Can I help you? If you don't want to miss your time on visitation, it's morning time. If you like, if you like, try and pray in the afternoon. It won't be the same as the morning time. Take note of what I just said. Because you cannot change the written word. He said, I visit man every morning. Now watch this. You can visit him. It's different when he visits you. His visitations on earth is morning time. Of course, during the day you can pray and have visitations. That's your time. But his times and his watches and his times and his seasons and his choices, that's what he said. He said, in this season, everybody don't miss this. He said, discern, discern my choices. That's for all of you. Discern my choices. I don't like to get into politics, but I know his choice. Discern my choices. Discern my times. Discern my seasons. And discern my doors. You need to know which door I'm opening and which door I'm shutting. Everybody write it down. You don't only need wisdom in this season. You need discernment. Discerning his choice in matters. And I'm going to get today when he says, well, what, what, what's one wrong choice can be detrimental? We're going to get there. So please remember from the beginning, the father sees in secret the chambers of his heart and he rewards in the open the chambers of his hand. This was the, this was the voice of Jesus that came. He said, come into my courts. This is for all of us. Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. There are four victories he wants to give you in this season, but there are places you have to go to get it. Come into my courts and I will show you my glory of righteousness and justice. So you have to go to court in this summertime if you want victory in court. What happens in the court? The judge gives the ruling. Are we not called to rule and reign? There you go. So you got to hear Christ's ruling on the matter. In the court, the king gives the ruling. So you have to show up to court in this time. Everyone on the line. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna repeat it again. This time in season, you have to show up to court. If you don't show up to court, Jesus told me there are many. Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. He said, there are, I'm gonna share this experience I had this morning. Because experience is what you teach. Don't teach anything you have not experienced. Don't miss this. Do you know? Okay. Let me start this way. I was driving home. That's why yesterday I wasn't on the line. I was driving home and Jesus said, don't go home. Park the car at the resting station. You know, when you're on the highway, you can pull over and rest if you are sleepy. He said, don't go home. It was at 2, 3 a.m. this morning. Park at the station. Everybody don't miss this. Hey, obedience is so important. He said, park and sleep in the car. Don't go home. Obedience. So I laid, my friends, as I was sleeping in worship, I saw death. Death. 
Now I know from the hours of 12 to 3, death and hell is on earth. And I saw death, like a shadow of death. And on the road, it was death was setting up accidents, traps, because it was looking for blood. Don't miss this. I saw death and hell working together. Death was sitting on hell. Hell is like a pale horse. Nighttime where everybody's sleeping. Imagine if I had driven. I would have got an accident. This, is, this goes for all of you in the line. You got to watch and pray. Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. I saw death walking the road. Nighttime. Cars were not going. Set accidents. So do you know what they do? They do everything at nighttime. And then daytime when people are going by, if death has your name, you're going to get in an accident. And lo and behold, he said, now you can go home. That was five this morning to the park. There were four accidents ahead of me. And he said, Jesus said, tell my people. See, he will allow you to experience something to give people a message. You must come, come, see, come into my courts. Because, listen, he says, Satan has written many tickets. You know when you get a ticket on the road because you broke the law? Uh -huh. Many people, the enemy has written tickets and he's using it, he's using it against you in court. My God, don't, I'm going to say it again. I said, Jesus, how does the enemy write us tickets when you break my law? You know, when you're driving, you go over the speed limit, they're going to pull you over. Hmm. That's what he said in this time as he's all of us come into my courts. He said, the name, my name in court this season is faithful and just king. If you want victory in this time and season, there's four places to get the victory. What is his ruling? What is his verdict? You know when you go to court? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Satan writes people tickets? His demons? And then they go to court. Even in the natural, you got to go to court if you break the speeding limit or if your license is expired, right? You have to go to court. If you don't show up, what will happen? You have to pay the price. Something will be taken from you. Your license can be taken from you if you don't show up the court, right? Well, and now, I, now I understand how Satan steals from us. We don't show up the court. If you don't show up to the courts of heaven, mm -hmm, watch this. Jesus told me, I give the demons permission to take from you because you miss your time of visitation with me. You want me to show you that in Luke? Luke says, in the book of Luke, he told, let me, let me find it for you. Let me find it for you. One second. Oh, my friends, you know, you know, you've been hearing this every year, but times of visitation protects your children. Let me show you. Luke 19, 41. I was like, wow. Laying in the car, your spiritual eyes open because you obeyed and you see the spirit of death sitting. I said, this is how accidents happen throughout, throughout the day. It's sown in the nighttime. While men slept, the enemy came and what? Sow the seed. So those accidents that happen during the daytime, that some end up in death, is already, watch this. It's already an agreement between death and hell for that soul. And death passed my car. 
Like Jesus said, don't miss it. This goes for all of us. This is what we got to come to court. I said, Lord, what did death? Look, my heart was panting. When, when death is coming, fear accompanies death. How many of you know the Bible says death is the last enemy? We're going to fight. Not Satan. Paul says death is the last enemy. Mm -hmm. When death is coming, fear accompanies, accompanies death. Suddenly, I began to hear tongues in my heart. That's Holy Spirit. And I begin to hear the blood of Jesus speaking. Now, everybody, where's the blood? It's at the mercy seat, the throne room, the courtroom. Mm. I heard the voice of the blood of Jesus say, death cannot hold my son down. He is my risen king. I break the covenant of death and hell over my people. I started writing. As the blood of Jesus was speaking to death and hell. I break the covenant of death and hell over my sons in this time and season. I said, wow, that's the time and season we are in. I'm write it down. The blood is speaking. Greater things. How many of you want to do greater works? The blood has to speak for you to do greater things. The blood has to speak for you to do greater works. We overcome by the... You can't overcome death and hell without the blood of the Lamb. Learn how to use the blood. Before the children of Israel will come out of Egypt, God told Moses one thing, put blood on the doorposts. It's time for each and every one of you to not only put the blood on different parts, put it on your destiny, put it on your purpose, put it on your identity, but most especially, be like Job. I love Job. You know why? Even though what he feels, feared the most came upon him job always used to sacrifice sheep and put blood on all, all all his things that's why satan said have you not built a hedge of protection around him write it down you need hedge of protection in this season blood hey when death passed by me at 2 a.m the fear you can feel it Jesus said, this is why I told you don't go home. I wanted to show you this is how death and hell operate. They operate during nighttime while everybody's sleeping. Then daytime, people who don't pray. See? People who don't pray to avert disaster. Accidents happen on the street. Lo and behold, this morning, my friends, on the way home, there were three accidents ahead. Now imagine if I didn't listen to Jesus, I would have gotten an accident. What I'm trying to tell you in this time of season is obedience will save you, will preserve you from death and destruction. What is death doing at 2, 3 in the morning on the streets? Look at Luke. Hey. You don't miss your time of visitation because face-to-face -face will preserve your life from death. That's what he told Jacob. I have seen God face-to-face -face and my life is preserved. Who needs your life preserved from death? You have to be face-to-face. Face-to-face will preserve your life from death and hell. The reason why people are in hell, they didn't have face-to-face. -face. Because in his face is life and life more abundantly. Listen to this. Luke 19, 41. And then we're going to get to the letters. And when he came near, he beheld the city and he wept over it, saying, if thou had known, even now, at least in thy day, the things that belong unto your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. There are things that belong to your peace in this time and season, but it's hid from you. You can't see it. Why? There are things that belong to your peace, people of God on the line. But why is it hid from your eyes? Let's continue. For the days that come upon thee that thy enemies huh, shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee around 
and keep thee on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children with thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Why? Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. When you don't know the time of his visitation, you and your children and the things that belong to your peace is taken. Gosh, I wish the time will come. I'll be patient. I wish the whole body of Christ can hear teachers like this from Jesus. If you miss your time of visitation, that's why the enemy is stealing, killing, destroying our children in America. Let me tell you what Jesus said. You're talking to me about America the next four years. He said, hmm, yeah, I'll share it. What? Let, me, let me read it right now. Let me, this, to let you know, look. Hmm, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody hear this? Our children. Here you go. Found it. He said, there is so much opposition in places of power in America, but I am slowly plying their hands off the floodgates that righteousness and grace may flood the land and revive the patched lands of America. Yet there is a price. You are fighting against Satan's plan to rule the world. You are fighting against an ignorant generation of young people who have been selectively taught what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong. Break the curses of your government controlled by Satan. Thousands of innocent children have been victimized, brutally raped, and tortured as offerings to Satan to bring down your nation. So, everybody watch this. If Molech, Ishtar, and Baal, mm -hmm, those are the three of our children, this young generation, they are the three who have taken children's identity. But watch this, you ready? You are mature enough to hear this. They are, do you know the reason why the other side wants to keep abortion? Because you have to sacrifice children to Molech in order to stay in power. Any president or any king who wants to stay in power and commit unrighteous crimes and acts on the people and they don't know, children have to be sacrificed. You say, how? Look at the time of Moses and Jesus. In order for Pharaoh to stay in power, because God, come on, don't miss this. <laughs> the devil knew ahead of time that Moses would take him out. They wanted to kill Moses, the children. Whenever a move of God is coming to a nation, mm -hmm, don't miss this. Satan goes after the children. Kill all of them from zero to two. I don't want to talk about politics, but <laughs> people are voting for demons in office. Yeah, I'm going to say it that way. They See what Jesus said? Thousands of innocent children are being brutally raped, but you don't see it. Human sex trafficking. Victimized. Why? Tortured. It's offerings to Satan mm -hmm. to bring this nation down. What does that mean? That means if they want to bring a nation down, they need the blood of children. It's called Molech. It's called Baal. It's called Ishtar. They need blood. Mm -hmm. See why we need the blood? Because in the spiritual realm, in order to take back thrones and seats over nations and cities, blood is required in order for your throne to be established in a kingdom. Mm -hmm. So any nation on earth you see that uh, satanic demonic activities taking place, know that that president had to sacrifice many, many innocent children to become president. It's not the, it's not the vote of the people. You really think it's your vote? No, 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 no. Things are first natural, then spiritually. The demons give the candidates mm -hmm, laws, 
and kill many children will make you president. Your vote don't count. So what we got to do in the spirit, we also have to use the blood of Jesus to fight for thrones and seats. While the seat of unrighteousness and wickedness in spiritual high places is ruling, we need to be seated with Christ and plead the blood over seats and thrones. Or, sit, Jesus told me, you are not only, you are fighting Satan's, let me say it again, you are fighting against Satan's plan to rule the world. You are fighting against an ignorant generation of young people. And you are fighting against a government that's ruled by Satan. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, who do you think the White House is, is ruled by? Look, I, I'll share, because you, you all are mature, so I'll share with you. Look, between Haiti, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago, that is, look on your map. Satan has a White House there. And when he gathers the Freemasons, they are the ones who are in, they are the ones who are in spiritual high places committing wickedness. So can you imagine everyone on the line? This scared me. Jesus said, if America miss her time of visitation this next four years, I'm handing her over to Satan. Her enemies. Everybody, who are the enemies of America? Come on, don't miss this. Script scripture. He was crying over America. Then Holy Spirit said, go to the scripture. If America missed their time of visitation, watch this. He said, when your enemies come, they will kill all the children first. Because they are the next generation. And what is the church doing? See, everybody, let me, let me read that part again. It's very important. Look at that. Luke 19. If, if America don't know their time of visitation. Okay, so who carry visitations? Prophets. When a prophet comes to the land, God want to visit the nation. Anytime a prophet show up, it's your time of visitation. Don't miss that. I'm talking about a true prophet now, not the false ones. When a true prophet is sent to you, the first reward you're going to get is a visitation of God. Let me show you. Watch this. Oh, y'all about to have a lot of visitations. Come on, this line right now. Come on, come on. Come on, receive your visitation. I'm speaking to you as a face-to-face -face prophet. Come on. You're going to receive face-to-face -face visitations. See? Because you're not going to miss your time of visitation because you're hearing wisdom on times, wisdom on seasons. Show up to court as a visitation. One second, I want to show you this scripture. I'm excited for you all. Show up to court for your children. Show up to court for your children. Show up to court and it's time for your children. Because Molech, Baal, and Ashtaroth, they want, they want the blood of children to sacrifice, to continue to control America. Watch this. Luke 7, 16. And there came a fear on all. Watch this. And they glorify God. Watch this saying that a great prophet has risen among us and that God has visited his people. When God raised up a prophet to visit the people. But I'm sorry to tell you, most of these prophets have lost it because they don't know the, they don't even know their office. Yeah, I said it. They don't know that being a prophet is to prepare the people for visitations. It's not about your prophecy. God wants to visit everybody. That means they are not great prophets. Come on. It says, when God raised up a great prophet, he wants to visit the people, the nation, the city, the village. It's not about you. 
It's about him. That's why Moses is a face-to-face -face prophet. See? Jesus is a face-to-face -face son. Father visited the earth because of Jesus. Because he was not only a prophet. See, watch this. John the Baptist was a prophet. Because when Jesus showed up, the father visited him at the river. And gave him four revelations. You see, wherever there's a prophet, there's open heaven. And the father speaks or visits you. But who are the most persecuted prophets? Because Satan knows if I can persecute the prophets, the people will not get a visitation. Because I want their children. My God. Everybody, you see that? That's why it is called the tomb of prophets. So I say to you, God is going to visit you. Don't miss your time of visitation. Why? There are things that belong to your peace in this time. Look, oh my God. There are things that belong to you. You can't get it through prayer. Only by visitation. Come on, somebody. Go and read that look again. There are things that belong to your peace. See, America is supposed to be in a time of peace. There are things that belong to America's peace. But what's taking place? They have missed, no. They have, they have not missed their time of visitation. I pray they don't. If America misses her time of visitation, I'm letting all of you know because the latter glory will begin in America. It hasn't begun yet because he told me he's cleaning the church. Cleansing come before glory. He said, once I finish with the church, then I'm not going to judge the world. Then the world will not have to, see? He has to clean the house before he clean the world. Judgment is not final. Wrath is. So please don't look at judgment like, oh, no, you need to know his heart. Judgment is to bring forth righteousness. That means there's unrighteousness in the land. And things have to be made right by his righteousness. And righteousness go with justice. And children need justice. I'll share with all of you. My friends, if Jesus was to open your eyes to see in secret places, what these people are doing in secret, sacrificing children, pedophiles, raping, mm -hmm, just to become a president and a governor and a senator, uh, witchcraft in high places. And people are voting for them because the, the, the blood of the innocent is being shed for power. That's what Jesus said. He says, spiritual wickedness where? In high places. What must we do? America needs Look, America need a lot of visitations. Mm -hmm. Starting from the top, like Nineveh. I'm, my prayer is one day from the president all the way down, going to call a national fast. Come on, somebody. We repent so God can relent. We're not going to be like Jonah, who get mad when God show mercy to America. America need mercy, but they're on the brink. They're on the brink of war. Why? Everybody, do you see how scripture is lining up? That if you miss your time of visitation, your enemies will come in. Right now, what's protecting America right now is covenant. But if America break the covenant by, watch this, betraying Israel, it's over. I'm speaking in parables. I don't like talking about politics, but this nation's is on the line. If we betray Israel, which one party wants to, war is coming. And Jesus told me, I'm not going to stop the war this time. You betray Israel, you betray me. And if you betray the one who's protecting you, who can protect you? Everybody, everybody, do you see that? And when war starts in America, it's going to affect the whole world. That's Satan's plan. He wants blood. 
But what is the church doing? Come on, let's be honest. What's the church doing? Mm -hmm. But Jesus told me, if I find a few, everybody see like Abraham, if he finds a few righteous, he's not going to allow it. But we have to pray righteous prayers. Come into my mountain. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come in my courts. So everybody, who wants victory in this time and season? You got to go to court. He's going to give you justice. He said, come into my chambers and I will show you my glory of love and truth. See, there's victory in different places. Don't miss this. The mountain, the garden, the chambers, the courts, the secret place. If you want him to reward you in the open victory, you got to be in the secret place. The firstborn of the dead. The four living creatures of glory. The man, the eagle, the lion, the lamb. See four victories? As I was repenting of my sins, seen and unseen at the feet of Jesus, the faithful and just king decreed, I am faithful and just in this season to forgive my sons and daughters of all their sins and cleanse them of all unrighteousness. Tell my sons and daughters to ask me for a new, clean and pure hearts to walk with me even deeper and greater in this time and season. Suddenly, I saw a man engulfed with fire and smoke. His white linen clothes was dipped in blood, and his face was like a lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. I saw an eagle on the shoulders of the man with lightning, fire, and thunder in its eyes. The lion was laying, laying at the feet of the man. The lion roared and it shook my heart to the core like an earthquake as I fell at the feet of the man. The man laid his hand on my head saying, fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore and amen and have the keys of death and hell. Tell my sons and daughters, Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy many destinies through death and hell where pride, stubbornness, and rebellion abides. So we know where pride, stubbornness, and rebellion, where, where does it come from? Come from hell. Those who love, obey, and trust me in the midst of giants in the land will be given wisdom and grace to conquer with my love and overcome with my glory. So you conquer with love. You need love to conquer your fears. Everybody, what do you need to conquer in this season? I, I've given you the weapon. You need love to conquer that thing. If it's fear or whatever it is that you need to be conquered, you just say you need love to conquer and you need glory to overcome. Watch this. He said, love wins all wars, but truth wins all battles. I will give victory and glory only to those who walk closer with me, obey me, Love me, seek me, and wait on me in quietness, seeking my heart. So I learned a secret. Y'all ready? Your victory is in seeking. The more you seek his heart, you don't only go from glory to glory, you go from victory to victory. Who needs victories in the natural? Seek his heart. That's where your victory is. See what he said? I will give I will give victory and glory to those who are seeking my heart. My eagles, here we go. The four living creatures that I saw, this is what they're coming to do in this time and season. The eagle is the overcomer. He said, my eagles are overcomers. My lambs are rulers and my lions are conquerors.
what are you wrestling with that you've not yet overcome? You got to turn into an eagle. That's the only way you're going to overcome. Lord, make me an eagle to overcome old habits. What do you need to overcome that you're wrestling with? You got to be an eagle. He said, many have been wrestling with the flesh. My ruling is it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. The assignment and covenant of death and hell is broken. The book of curses of death and hell is overturned, reversed, and broken. I decree life, light, and love. He said, the wages of sin is death, but my blood covenant will drop all accusations of death and hell. The covenant of death and hell is broken by my face and my hand and my blood. Watch this. I like this one. You got to put on these two. He said, repentance make you invisible to the enemy, while forgiveness make you clean. He can find nothing in you in common with him. So what do we need the most in this time of season also? Have a repentant and a forgiving heart. It makes you invisible. Can you imagine the power of invisibility is in repentance because the blood washes you as you repent and the enemy cannot accuse you because now you are clean. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Two. Tell my sons and daughters to wrap your face in your mantles. Mm. Wrap your face in your mantle of intimacy and victory. The victory is in seeking intimacy. No, no, no. Your victory, everyone, like your victory is not picking up a weapon. It's intimacy. Intimacy gives you victory and glory. Mm -hmm. Watch this. He said, tell my sons and daughters, I am placing an emerald green cloak over you. That's the mantle. This, the, the color of the mantle in this season is not red. It's green. You know, every season there's a new mantle he put on you. It can be red, it can be blue, it can be white, it can be purple, depending on the time and season you are in. This time and season is green. It's emerald green. He said, from today on, they will speak with a new voice. So everybody, he's about to give you a new voice. A voice with authority and power. Just as in the old days, a prophetic anointing came over, came over and upon my sons, for the time is at hand that my sons will speak my words. Now, everybody, don't miss what I'm about to tell you. And we, we're going to teach on it very soon. He's he's been talking to me to teach on how sons need to speak to the earth for the earth. Okay, let me give you an example. You ready? Let me give you an example. How many of you know the Bible says death is swallowed in victory? Mm, come on, don't miss that. Death can be swallowed in victory. So how is death swallowed in victory? Jesus said to me, the earth has a mouth. Command the earth to swallow witchcraft. Come on. Come on, somebody. He said, command. And then he said, let me show you. I was sitting with Jesus in heavenly places. and He had a ball of fire in his hand. And then he put the ball of, he said, now take the ball of fire, cast it upon the earth. So I did as I was, I did as I was commanded. I cast the fire on earth, my friends, and I saw the mouth of the earth open. And it swallowed death, hell, and Satan. And he said, speak to the earth, and the earth will swallow. See everybody on the line? It's time for you to speak. Speak to the earth. The, the reason why the Father is giving you a new voice mm -hmm, is to, for the earth to hear your voice. Come on. So it's time for you to speak to the earth and the earth will obey. Earth, I am a son of God. I decree that you swallow all 
plots and plans for the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name, the earth will obey. And angels will back you. But you have to have a new voice to do it. So, as time, maybe tomorrow by grace, I want to teach on brides speak to heaven while sons speak to the earth. You have to speak to the earth because you are in the God realm. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. You are a son of God. So, he has put the heavens and the earth and all of it, he has given it to sons as inheritance mm -hmm. over the works of his hands. We are to speak to the earth. We say, how? Moses said, the earth will swallow you tomorrow. And the earth swallowed the rebellious leaders. The earth is a servant of heaven and it's ready to serve you. But you must command it as a son. And but you see, the earth will back you. You say, where's that in the Bible? Read the book of Revelation 12. When the dragon was after the woman, it says the earth was fighting for the woman. The earth was fighting the dragon. Oh, that's beautiful. We're going to learn that. It's, look, everyone online, yeah, I love prayer as a high priest. But when you're a son, it's totally different. You walk in authority and power. You don't need to pray. You pray in secret, but you operate in the open. You don't pray in the open. You're supposed to be praying in the secret as a high priest. Jesus prayed all night. I never saw him pray during, during the day. Because he had done all his prayers in the secret. Now in the open, he was walking in authority. Come out. Come out. Come out. Be healed. Be healed. Come out. Be healed. One word. Why? Because as a king and an emperor, you don't pray. You say the word. Hmm? You know what the centurion said? Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. Just send the word. Ah, I'm a man who has servants under authority. Bam. When the word carry authority, you only say it one time. In the name of Jesus, out. Why people keep saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Because they are not kings. And they don't believe. When you are a king, you give commands. One, go. That's it. I don't need to pray in tongues. You are a king, give the command. Be cast out. That's it. So it's time for us to fully walk in our sonship so that the earth can back us. Because we're in dark times. When you see darkness, what do you say? Let there be light. When you are an emperor, you speak the opposite of what you see. So if there's darkness, you don't, you don't drive back the darkness. You say, let there be light. And there was light. See, God was speaking to the earth for six days. And you can speak to the earth too, but you have to be a son. Who you think name all the animals? The son, Adam. We have that same dominion in us through Christ. Watch this. He said, a prophetic anointing will come over and upon my sons, for the time is at hand that my sons will speak my words, the words and divine will of the Father. Many years I have prepared you for this task, my sons. Many of you have endured severe hardships, trials, persecutions, and tests. I gave you a lot of grace and mercy during these refining years. I have always been with you, even if times seem tough and unreasonable. The things in your life happen for a reason. Who want to know? Who want to know why those things in your in your life happen? It happened for a reason. Let me tell you. He said, "I used it all to refine and mold you into the image of my Son Jesus Christ." So everything you went through was to mold you and refine you and shape you. Won't you give him glory for that? Wow. So my mistakes, my failures, everything that happened, happened for a reason. He's molding you. He's molding you. He's molding you. In Jesus' name. He said, I listen to the prayers of those who love me. I only look at the hearts. Nothing is hidden from me. I do see all things. Come and make it right before me. Come. And repent so I can make you as white as snow and wash you clean 
for I am coming for a spotless bride. If you come and wait on me, sit at my feet in silence, in the quiet of the night, I will teach you things and I will reveal secrets to you if you desire to know more. Who desires to know more? Quiet of the night. I want to lead you, my sons, step by step. I want to teach and train you like I taught and trained my son, Yeshua. Let me be your father, your perfect father. To those who repent and persevere through my testing and keep their hearts pure towards me, I will give authority and a scepter and you will rule and reign with me. But those giving this authority will serve the people that I serve like I serve the people. You will speak to them the truth from the Father, and as you hear the Father speak, so you shall speak, for the sons will hear the Father speak and will be obedient to his voice. I am about to set the platform and raise the bar. See? He said he's about to set the platform and raise the bar. Do you want to receive true maturity and be called my son? Be like a child. And obey my voice, have faith in me, and trust me. It's a word for the Father. It's time to be trained and taught by the Father. Don't you want to be trained and taught by the Father? And that's what he was saying. He said, I train my sons on earth. I train my brides in heaven. But there's also a place beyond heaven and earth where I train my sons. It's the new. So the new move that's coming, our training is not in heaven and earth, it's beyond. So who's ready to be trained and taught by the Father? Write it down, Father, train and teach me. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, one more letter here. This was posted tonight, today, on, but it has to be shared again so you can know the weight of it because we are all going through it. Ever since June, Jesus told me in June to watch and pray with him for Satan wages war and battles in the summertime. It has truly been a war and a battle. I have been wrestling heavy with my flesh this summer. My heart and my face desire closeness but my flesh is weak and it has, and the flesh has its desires. It is a constant war and struggle. All my weaknesses, shortcomings, and old habits are before my face. I saw Jesus coming out of the tomb. You remember the angels rolled the tomb and then Jesus came out. That same tomb, I saw Jesus today. He was coming out of the tomb. Don't miss this. I saw Jesus coming out of the tomb and he smiled at me and said, death and hell cannot hold me down. And death and hell cannot hold you down. Let us go worship the Father. So worship will bring you out of the tomb. Come on. There's more. He said the summertime is loaded with many distractions and dangers. Tempers flare, flesh is everywhere, Men and women are weak. So, everyone on the line, when do your weaknesses come out the most? It's summertime. Mm -hmm. He said, and if you are not praying as you should, the dangers of falling into sin are great. Ask me for my body and my blood, for all your weaknesses and in times of temptation. The most direct path to pleasing me is obedience, which opens the windows of heaven, which pours forth graces on you and all those around you. You know, everyone on the line, your obedience can protect those around you, even if they are not obedient. One man's obedience can protect those around you. That's why obedience is important. Even if your family is not obedient, you be obedient. They are being, they are, because of you, they are being protected. Obedience protects. Mm -hmm. There's more. He said, conquer your flesh 
with the power of obedience. Wow. Everybody, how do we conquer the flesh? Obedience. You can fast and pray, and that flesh is still going to be there. Come on, somebody. But he said the power of obedience conquers your flesh. Wow. Isn't that a beautiful strategy? He says, conquer your flesh mm -hmm, by the power of obedience. Do not look at your flesh or you will fall into self-pity, shame, guilt, and discouragement. Look at my face. So as I looked at his face, love, joy, peace, and comfort flooded my heart. He said, I love when you are, when you are open with me. Everybody in this season, be open with Jesus. I love when you are honest with me, transparent with me, vulnerable with me. I love when you run to me, when you fall into diverse traps set by the enemy for you to slip, stumble, and fall. I am here to pick you up and walk with me at all times. It shows your love and trust in me and it moves my heart for you. You are worth fighting for. Watch this. The real battle is the old you versus the new you. Come on, somebody. Don't miss that. You know why your old habits keep coming back? The old you is fighting the new you. That's the worst battle. Come on. I, can I get a witness on the line? You're not only just fighting your flesh and demons. The old you. I say, that's the battle? The new me versus the old me. How do you win that? The old you, come on, everybody. The old you want to go back to drinking. The old you want to go back to smoking. Come on, the old you want to go back to masturbation. Come on, fornication. Name it. The, that's the old you. The new you is discipline. The new you love Jesus. So how do we now crucify Kofi so the mica can rule? How do you crucify the old you? Because the old you has desires. And that's whom Satan wants to wake up, is the old you. So, everyone the line, if you see old habits that you gave up in the past creeping back in, you know the battle between the new you and the old you is at hand. Obedience will help you conquer him. Yeah. He said, your flesh is at war against your spirit. I will crucify your idols and flesh and give you victory and glory. I love this. Give me your pain. Emotional, physical, mental. Give me your frustrations. Give me your failures and your losses. Give me the unexpected. Give me your all. Everybody, give me your life and I will do wonderful things with you. Give me your life and I will live through you. Give me your failures and your faults and I will work through them to make my glory shine and my love abide. Offer each day and everything that it brings to me. I will sanctify it all, everything. Even your struggles and failures, just give it to me and I will make you holy. Wow. A bride fit for her king. He said, because I look upon you through the eyes of mercy, I see the forces aligned against you every day. I see how you have fought violently against them. And I see when you feel overcome and shamed by them. It is then you need me the most. It is then when I want to run. Sorry, it's, it, is, it is when I want you to run to me, close the door behind you, and confess those feelings without shame. For I do not shame you. I do not inoculate you with guilt. This is the work of demons. They inject that guilt. Sometimes it is even so vague that you cannot find words to fight it. Sometimes it is so perversive and has been infused in you since childhood that there's no way to fight it. 
So everybody online, we've been fighting guilt ever since our childhood. How do we overcome? We got to run to Jesus. He said, ever since your childhood, that's where all our problems began. It's our childhood. So he said, I want to visit those areas in your childhood, back in time and space, and recover it. Tell my sons and daughters, I have seen your struggles with the flesh, and help is on the way. Woo! -hoo. Who need help in this time? I need a lot of help. I don't know about y'all, but come on. I need a lot of help. Let me tell you why. Because every time you are in the spirit and you are spending time with the Father Jesus, right, Jesus, and you come back in the natural, your flesh become weak, depression, discouragement, because you are back on earth, darkness. So it's not, it's not anything wrong you are doing. It's the environment we are in. We are, the earth is beautiful, but it's covered with darkness. So discouragement, depression, yes. You have joy in your heart, but around you is darkness. Watch this. He said, those who have been against you will be as nothing in your future. Woo, ever write it down. Anybody that has come against you in the future, you ain't going to see them. That's why you have to forgive and release. He said, this is the time of spiritual warfare and tearing down of strongholds. And as such, you must endure and persevere, my loved ones. Ask me for grace, peace, rest, and perseverance. You have done the right thing by coming to me and asking for my body and blood that will make up for all your weaknesses. Uh, aren't you in love with Jesus? Like, he has a solution for every problem. He said, when you're in your weakness, ask me for my body and blood. That's communion. He said, no matter what, I have seen your tears. I know your struggles. No matter what, I am not giving up on you on the line. No matter what, everybody, sow that seed in your heart right now without a shadow of doubt. Jesus will never give up on you. Never. No, I'm going to say that again because that's his personality. That's his character. Jesus, no matter what, and I'm an example of one he should have given up on, but he didn't. You say, how? Because, watch this, in order for him to create humility in your, in your, in your life, your humanity will be exposed. More shortcomings, more of your weaknesses will come out. It make you vulnerable and prone and exposed to be attacked. And you need him. He said, the greater the struggles, the greater the breakthrough. The greater the battle, the greater the victory. My promise to you is my resurrection power and ascension glory. Everybody, what's his promise in this time and season for you? Resurrection power and ascension glory. So you're going to resurrect. Is you, you feel like your relationship is dead? You feel like your prayer life is dying? Resurrection is coming. Resurrection is coming. And ascension glory. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. Let's proceed that right there. Resurrection. Who need all the help? Come on. We, we all need help. Come on. We need help. We all need help. Why? Because as the new you is seeking the Father and Jesus, the new you. And let me, let me give you a secret if you don't mind. Jesus told me this. This will help you. He said, I don't see the old you. I don't deal with you based on the old you. Remember, they that are in me are new creatures. I see the new you. 
but I also see the old you trying to fight the new you. Everybody, you see that? So he sees you as a new creature. The devil sees the old you. So that's the battle right there. The enemy don't see the new you. He sees the old you because that old you is whom he had, watch this, a soul tie with. That old you is who he had an, an attachment with. That old you is whom he had an entangle with. Come on. That old you is who he had a relationship with. But now that that relationship has been broken through Christ Jesus and his blood, the new you Jesus sees and the old you Satan sees. So that's the battle every day. The old you want to go back smoking. Come on. The old you want to go watch porn. Come on. The old you, come on. Let's be transparent and open. Come on. The old you has habits. That whenever you are stressed, the old you want to, see, go back to those places that are false security and false comfort. Let me drink. Let me smoke. I go to that temptation every day. Every day, the old you, my, my friends, the old you versus the new you is an everyday constant battle. Can I show you how to win? I think of others. I think of the Father and Jesus. I don't want to feel the Father. And I think about others. The temptations are so strong. You have to go somewhere alone. It's called secret attack of the enemy. And what, he, what is he using? Your old habits. Do you have any old habits that I know yet conquered? That's what the enemy want to use. So he knows your buttons. He reads you like a book. Okay. Well, I think I'm jumping ahead to that one. Let me read it then since I'm saying it now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me say it exactly how Jesus said it. He said, the enemy is counting on your failures of the past to cause you to quit. And we all have failures in the past. We have failed relationships. Come on. Uh, failed opportunities. The enemy is counting on that so you can quit. He said, no matter how you feel, never give up or give in. I will give you grace to triumph, conquer, and overcome. Satan uses the weaknesses of man to wound you so deeply that all you can think about is how to avoid pain and control others. Oh. When you are hurt, you got to be careful because you want to avoid that pain and control people. That's not you. That's not self-love. That's the enemy. He said, you see, the enemy succeeds in sidetracking and discouraging you by drawing your attention to your weaknesses. This is Satan's favorite way to disconnect a soul from me. Don't miss this. Some of you on the line might feel like you, are, you feel disconnection. You feel disconnected. Let me tell you the three things the enemy is using to disconnect you so you can reconnect. Accusation, guilt, and shame. Watch for those three. When you see those three, those three things come your way, it's coming to disconnect your phone. When you're going through accusations, guilt, and shame, it's hard to hear from Jesus because you are disconnected. Everybody, you see that? That will help you. Okay, why, why do I, I don't, I don't watch for accusation. Watch for guilt. Recognize it. Rec Am I carrying shame or guilt or accusation somewhere? It's, you know, when you go to, when I'm driving on the highway, I be losing my um, Wi-Fi sometimes because you're in the wrong place. You don't have Wi-Fi. Same thing. When you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you lose connection with the Lord. You got to drive and find the right connection. Everybody, you see that? Things that are natural are very, very, very spiritual. Mm -hmm. He said, remember, you are your own worst enemy. Satan reads you like a book. So do his demons. And they know exactly how to make you bolt out of prayer. 
See, they know what trigger you. Everyone on the line. They know. And how do they know? The old you. Yes, my friends, it's a battle. But we're going we're gonna to get the victory. It is a battle. The old you, that's how you recognize old people from your past coming back. They're coming for your old you. Not the new you. No, 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 no. Not the new you. They want the old you to arise back up again. The old you that used to cuss. Come on. The new you don't cuss. The new you in Christ is beautiful. The new you is holy. The new you is righteous. The old you, oh yeah. Come on, we all we all we we know we, we all know what it is. Mm -hmm. The old you, road rage. Come on, somebody. The old you, that is the battle. Every day. It's a choice. Choose the new you in Christ. Or the old you in Satan. Ooh, that got to be a book right there. My God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I ain't choosing the old me. Come on. Can I get a witness on the line? Come on. The old you wants to isolate. The old, the new you is friendly. See, that's the battle every day. So come on. How about we all... We all, we all need grace to, in this season. Come on. Which areas? Let's write it down. Lord, give me wisdom and grace. See, wisdom and grace to overcome. What do you need to overcome in this season? Mm -hmm. He's going to give you the wisdom and grace to overcome. But let's write it down. Mm-hmm. I need all kind of graces. Come on, somebody. Come on. Grace over food. Come on, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Where do you need wisdom and grace in this time of season? There you go. Let me see if I can find another one. Uh-huh, this one. He said, one wrong direction can waste days, months, and even years. So be careful because the enemy will try and rush you into things. Everybody, if you feel rushed into anything, a relationship or a job or anything, that's not God. That's Satan. He's rushing you into a relationship because you are lonely. Uh-oh. He's rushing you because, see? Jesus said, I am very pleased with, the, with those of you who are moving forward carefully and finally using your gifts and dedicating yourself to prayer. This is so pleasing to me, but it's so threatening to the enemy. So he will undoubtedly try to derail you. And how? Just be on your guard and move forward carefully. Always remember, I do not rush you into anything but the enemy does so do you feel like you are being forced or rushed into a relationship that man on your neck oh I'm not leaving you till you be in a relationship when you feel like you feel rushed or forced that's Satan oh no you know God showed me you my wife we marry in six months bro go go, go back into fasting and praying uh -huh, there you go send his send his tail back into prayer why are you rushing me? That's Satan. Uh -huh. Everybody take notes on that. Don't rush or you make a mistake. He said, uh-huh. This is a warning sign for you, a flashing yellow light. Be careful. Danger is ahead. I have come that you may have life more abundantly with great peace and brotherly love. And I hate those who divide and separate brothers. Know yourself better than the enemy know you, and this will not happen. But yet, he said he hated when we divide and separate relationships. Why? Because when you rush into a relationship, you, 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 you're going to end up separating it. So let's be patient. Move carefully in this time and season. Discern before you make a move. Before you make any move, everybody ask for wisdom and counsel before you make a move. 
Before David will fight any war battle, he asked the Lord first before he did it. See? Ask the Lord before you do it. So what do we need grace? Yeah. Yes, Lord, I need grace for my flesh. Come on. Wisdom and grace to overcome my flesh. Yes, Lord. What is, your, what is yours in this season? Mm -hmm. What do you need grace to overcome in this time and season? Woo. Yes, Lord. It's 11, 16, before we rest. What do you need grace in? Your emotions? Feelings? Which area? Write it down. The Lord said, I'm going to give you grace and wisdom to overcome in this time and season. Amen and amen and amen and amen. So those are the, those are the letters for today, uh, for each and every one of you, uh, the video will be up for those who want to hear it again. And I think by grace, I want to post it for each and every one so you can save those words. It will preserve you. Uh, by grace, I have an assignment for each and every one of you. So, as I told you, by grace, uh, I am being sent to Jamaica from Monday, the 15th to the 22nd seven days in Jamaica. So I have an assignment for each and every one of you too. Every day, every day, if you can remember me in prayer for 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, whenever you have time, remember me in prayers. Mm -hmm. Every day for seven days, from Monday to Monday, remember your brother and your friend as I go on a mission and vision of the kingdom for his people. Mm -hmm. So please, from Monday to the next Monday, remember me in your prayers for just 15 minutes of your day. Just send up some tears and some requests on my behalf because Jamaica, hmm, well, I'll just be quiet. It's a war zone. It's a war zone. But all things are possible. And he said there are many souls there that are, the harvest is ripe, basically. So we're going for the harvest. Amen. So tonight, does anyone have any questions, please, before we end? Yes, it's time to rest. You have heard some vitamins and some nutrients today. So it's time to rest. But does anybody have any questions, please, before? Before we end? Well, amen. I don't want to hold you longer, sons and daughters. Um, may the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. And remember what he said his promise is. He said, my promise is victory. That means you're going to have victory and glory and joy will be your portion. And so Lord, we stand on your word. We receive that victory and glory in this season. Victory of all kinds to move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. So, love you all. God bless you all. Please remember me. I'll be in Jamaica, so I won't be on the line. But remember me in prayers. And by grace, the harvest shall come in the kingdom. Amen. So, I love you all once again. God bless you all. And have a good morning or good night. Shalom.